There have been a number of enhancements to stairs and railing elements um, in this release of Revit. Uh, too many for one video, so in this video I'm going to focus on the user interface changes of the stair and railing elements. So let's start with the stair element. Uh, the change is pretty subtle, but very useful. If you select uh, a stair, I've got a, a stair here on screen, and look at the properties palette. Um, all of the properties that are listed there uh, on the palette now have very detailed tool tips. So all you do is hover your mouse over the property and a tool tip will appear and it's going to behave exactly like the tool tips do on the ribbon. So uh, if you hover over it for just a moment, you'll get a very brief description, but if you wait a few seconds longer, it'll expand out to a more detailed description. So in this case, hovering over the base level, I can see that it's giving me uh, little tips about uh, the difference in behavior of this property, whether I'm creating it in a plan or a 3D view or a section view. Now, uh, sometimes these tool tips, when they expand fuller, actually contain illustrations. Now, those illustrations will help clarify what this property does. So this particular illustration here is showing us very clearly what the base offset property will do in your stair. So instead of editing it and guessing and trying to figure out what it does, um, you now have a much clearer idea just by looking at the tooltip. And every one of the properties on the palette is going to have one of these tooltips. So I encourage you to kind of go through each one, even if you're well versed in stairs already and feel very comfortable with them. Um, there's lots of little tidbits that you can learn here. For example, um, the desired stair height property is one that I've always ignored. And I was reading the tooltip here and I noticed that it said, well, this only works if the top level is unconnected. Now, it really should say if the top level is set to none, because if I come over here to the top level, um, unconnected is not a choice, but none is. And when I set it to none, that makes the desired stair height property available and I could now input a value. Now, if I were to apply that, you're going to see it's immediately going to affect my stair and kind of um, shrink it down uh, to the new height, but now this value is something I could input that would be separate from the heights of the levels. Now, you're not likely to do that very often um, in a stair tower situation, but you certainly might want to do that maybe on an exterior stair or some sort of a freestanding stair element where you just want to indicate exactly how tall it is. So that little tooltip helped me understand that that was even a possibility. I'm going to go ahead and undo that. So um, I do encourage you to kind of go through each of the properties here and, um, you know, learn what you can about them. In some cases, like this actual number of risers, it actually tells me the property is read only. So unlike the desired stair height where I can do something else to trigger that property to become available, here it's telling me, you know, don't bother. This one's read only. This one's just for your information. Now, all these tooltips also occur if you go into the edit type window. So as you hover over each of the properties in the type dialog, they will also have these very detailed tooltips and many times will have useful illustrations which will help you um, understand what each of the properties do. So I think if you spend the time to go through each and every one of the properties in both the instance properties and type properties dialog, you'll come away with a much better understanding of how the stair object functions and what the behavior of each of the properties are. Now, stairs for a long time have had... Um, the ability to reference other objects within their type. So my current stair type is stair metal plate stringer. So that stair references other types. So it's got a run type, a landing type, and support types for both left and right supports. Now, the way these work is um, when you decide which type you want, it actually uses a small little browse button here. And what's handy about that is that displays a second type properties window um, where you can directly manipulate the properties of that nested type. So you can stay within the same dialog and make your changes and it's a little bit more convenient. Now, railings didn't do this until this release. So uh, when I select a railing element, and go to edit type, uh, what you're going to see is that we now have that same behavior for top rails, handrails uh, one, and handrail two. So if you're using those nested subcomponents um, in railings, it's now going to be much more convenient to make those modifications because when you click in the type field, it'll now have that small little browse button. So let me show you an example where that could be really valuable. I'm going to turn on the preview here. 
and uh, reposition this dialogue. And if you look down here, I'm going to zoom in slightly, you can see this kind of a gap right there. Now, this uh, rail right here is one of my handrails, and it happens to be handrail one, um, and I know that because I called it bottom rail just to help me uh, remember which one it was. So the bottom rail here is my handrail one, and what I want to do is extend it just a little bit so that it engages with the other uh, pipe next to it. So I'll click the small little browse button here. That will open up the second type properties window, and uh, using the extension parameters, I can just put in uh, the value that I want. I just calculated uh, what this needs to be, um, and I'll pick uh, OK here to complete it. And now you can see that it extended, and it engages into the other rail and makes for a nice cleaner uh, connection there. And overall, I'm more satisfied with the result. So by now having this really subtle change in the user interface of the railing dialog, you're able to make changes like that without having to constantly jump in and out of other dialogues in order to do that. So it's a much more fluid um, uh, user experience. So while uh, the tooltips and this small enhancement in railings at first may seem like really minor changes, they're actually fairly significant because it makes the usability of both the stair and the railing elements um, much more satisfying and um, it makes it a much more useful experience.